Welcome, this is Beto here in the Media Center with Marketplace Masters for another exciting episode. We've got some good information for you here today with someone that I've actually spent a lot of time on the phone with. Those people that are so interesting and have such a remarkable history and really a solid knowledge base to the things that they're doing that you think you're going to have a 10-minute conversation and it ends up being a two-hour conversation. So that's kind of how I met Kenny in the first place. And so who I actually have with me here today is Kenny Atchison. He's someone that I've gotten to know real well. He's a very well-known speaker, has done a lot of different things in the automotive space, and we're really lucky to have him here. He's actually going to be coming to Marketplace Masters with us as well, and he is the founder of a company that has made a deep impact in the auto industry called Dealer Profit Pros. He is a marketing expert, and I would say if you're a dealer and you're looking for someone that can help with your strategies and a number of other services that he has, he is the guy to talk to. So, Kenny, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm in Anderson, Nevada, where it's about 80 degrees and it's gorgeous outside. All is good. Had so many conversations with you that went, in my opinion, in incredible directions that I'd love to meet you in person. You're one of the people on my list, Kenny. So let's get a little bit into your background. You know, you have a unique story of how you got into the automotive industry. You were talking with me a little bit earlier about that. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about it? Sure. Well, it actually even starts in how I got into marketing consulting. I started, I was doing some marketing, on, mostly online uh, in the beginning. And then someone came to me and said, wow, that was really amazing. I saw what you were doing. Uh, it was some technical stuff. And they said, how'd you do that? They figured out how to get a hold of me, and I told them. I just helped them to just be nice. Then it led to someone else calling me at a later date saying, hey, could you teach me how to do that? I'll pay you to teach me how to do what you're doing. And then I started getting paid to teach people how to do it. And then I created some courses for people to do what I was doing, and people were buying that. Then I started receiving phone calls, but it started with the first one that said, hey, and, and they would say, it would be a business owner saying, can you do it for me? And a consulting business was born, really. I'm giving you the shortened version there. And then I was consulting for a while in marketing primarily. And someone came to me that was working with some car dealers on sales and leadership and things other than marketing. He was impressed with what I could do. And he already knew what I could do. I did some work for him and said, hey, could you do some of that fancy marketing stuff for a car dealership? And I said, you know what? I don't know. And I said, let me, I'll have to take a look. You know, typically, my answer is always going to be yes first, and I'll, I'll figure it out in a lot of industries because marketing is marketing. But I thought, gosh, car dealers, you know, they spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing. I've got to assume that they're doing a great job. I checked it out, the client that he asked me to look at, and it turns out their marketing needed some work. And uh, I looked at it, and I said, yeah, I could help them for sure. And we got big results in about a two-week period. That's not what I would expect now because some of the things, you know, more people have learned about it, but it can still be quick. We got big results in about two weeks. They were excited and happy. I ended up getting a referral that was another car dealer and then another car dealer, then another car dealer, and I thought, gosh, and I didn't even have a website that was specific for car dealers at that point for consulting because we didn't have any clients that were car dealers. And now I had several then it ended up being my main source of clients was car dealers because, as you know, Abeto, in this industry, if you do well by someone, they really share it. They share it in their 20 groups. They share it at conventions. And so it really took off. And then I just pushed back on all the other types of businesses. We still have a few in there that we work with because marketing is marketing. And I do take ideas that I've learned from other industries. You know, I've worked, I won't name them off because there's so many. I've worked with nonprofits. I've worked with churches and preschools. I've worked with solar companies and other marketing consultants and helping them and authors and, and speakers and all kinds of other local businesses, doctors. And you can take ideas from one and share it with the other. But once I started working in car business, I really dove into it. I got into all their material to really understand more of how the dealership works and then started consulting with them on site, which also led to learning a lot more about the dealer industry. And it's a lot more interesting than I thought when I first started uh, and just doing the marketing. It, it's a great business. If, if I could go back in time quite a bit further, I would have started working with dealers sooner. That's great. So what I can tell you is that in the experience I've had, I had a lot of the similar kind of mindset when I first got in, not really knowing exactly how to apply skills to the dealership industry of the company that I've worked with. And I can tell you, it's, it, it takes some finesse. You must have been very naturally attracted to what works for dealerships, because I know that you've done a tremendously good job. That makes sense that that's how you got introduced to it. Marketing in other industries obviously going to help out a, a lot. 
automotive is one of the most competitive spaces, and I'd say you're probably at least one of the guys I know that can really help dealerships win in that arena. Talking about that, we're uh, getting a little bit into what it is that you might be able to do for a dealership to a degree. So if you don't mind, tell me a little bit about Dealer Profit Pros and how your service model works. Sure. Uh, well, I'm the founder, and I'm deeply involved in it. We're not the marketing agency or media agency in which you never speak to the owner. Uh, everybody gets a chance to speak to me because typically most of our clients start with consulting. They say, hey, here's what we're already doing. Tell us what we're missing. Are we missing any opportunities? And is what we're currently doing, uh, is it working? How could it be made to work better? So it's not necessarily something they're going to buy from us. They're just wanting me to dissect what they currently have. And most clients start with that. That's not how I did it in the beginning. We had services for sale, and people would call, and they would buy them. And then one of my initial dealership clients, I found out something they were doing months down the road, and I said, why are you doing that? You know, that's really, you know, you could do it this way and get more out of it. And sometimes I'll find ways that they may be wasting some money, or they, or they could redeploy it somewhere else. And uh, so we added that to the beginning, the consultation. So consulting is probably what I do as, as much as I do anything, and it's as valuable as anything that we do. Now we do pay-per-click management via Google and Facebook. We have a customer feedback system and complaint management system that is truly powerful. Pretty much anything you can do online. And then offline, we also do direct mail campaigns, and we write copy. And I write the copy. And uh, for pay-per-click management, I'm the one that's actually managing that because when it comes to the spending of the client's money on something, I'm heavily involved in that. Now, the feedback system, I just look over it, make sure it's working properly and everybody's being treated right. I don't necessarily plug in the data and all that. But as far as the consulting and spending of the client's money, if we're doing that on, say, pay-per-click or something, uh, it'll be me. One, I'm really good at it. Two, I enjoy it. I actually like looking at all the numbers and dissecting it and just trying to figure out how I can go from a you know, cost per conversion of $48, maybe I can get that down to $41. You know, I really try to get improvement out of everything that we do. And so a few other services that we provide, but they're really a full arsenal is what we deploy on behalf of the dealership. We actually have something that we started doing. We didn't always do this in the beginning, but medium to larger size dealer, they'll need assistance and just figuring out what media they need to be using and to continuously figure out, you know, is this working? How can we improve it? You know, should we buy this, you know, the next shiny object? And so we have a marketing director SR program, which I don't even think it's listed on our website because we don't offer it to everyone. And this is a program where I essentially become an assistant marketing director or marketing director for a dealer and then work with some of their team to help them get the most out of what they're doing. Or I assist with someone else that's already providing some things, but there's five or six things they're not good at, and then we help them uh, with that. That makes good sense for a dealership that is trying to focus on sales, where marketing seems like it's focusing on sales because it leads to it, but it's really a whole other world. And I'm just looking at your independent dealer page right here on your site and just rattling off a few of the things that you guys have. The discovery and diagnostic strategy consultation with you directly, which is great. You obviously get very involved with the consultations. Strategic consulting dealership. So it looks like you're even willing to go out and see them. Text message marketing, customer feedback and online review system, customer newsletters printed and delivered by a postal service direct to your consumers. And that's very important because that's still a big piece of marketing depending on what kind of dealership you are. Google AdWords, pay-per-click mastery, and that's a big deal. Uh, I've played around with that myself some. And obviously, if you're able to calibrate that like you were talking about where you can get their cost down, that's, that's hugely favorable. A lot of times your costs almost get negated if they've got someone in-house that doesn't know how to calibrate that stuff. Almost always, Beto. Almost always, when I look at, just as an example, we're talking about Google pay-per-click now, is almost always, if they're already doing it, I'll go in and look at it, and if they decide to have us manage it, when I say uh, it's me, uh, but if they decide to have us manage it, then uh, almost always the, the fee they pay us, they reap that in a savings and in new sales, because it's not just about cutting their cost. That's the first step, because they love it when I say, hey, you know what, you can cut out $200 a month on this because that's useless. You can cut out $150 a month on that because it doesn't look like it's working. And then by the time we're done, I'm like, you know, you could hire us and it's almost free <laughs> for the savings. So yeah, we uh, that does happen a lot. Yeah, I'll bet. I know it can get real expensive. If you cowboy it one side, but even if you're good at it, 
you know, you guys are creating expertise out of obviously doing incredible marketing, but also helping these dealers learn how they can actually cut and save some money in their marketing methods by doing it smarter. So that's that's an incredible thing. So referral results training programs, Facebook pay per, per click management. Facebook's a big deal right now. You guys are getting into a lot of the stuff with that. I know that for dealerships right now, Facebook's a huge deal for sales. You guys even do copywriting and a number of other things that are here, local online marketing, brand protection, and local SEO. That's a lot of work sometimes depending on exactly how it's uh, structured. So you guys really are kind of a full marketing opportunity for a dealer to be able to take either a number of the services you have or hire you directly, I think that is highly valuable. One of the things I think, Kenny, you probably agree with me that dealers really need to do is talk to you, right? You're one of those the type of guys where you got the website, you've got the services, maybe they've seen you speak, but really I'll bet the best time for you is when you're on a phone call with a new dealer and you can talk to them about their particular business a little bit right and give them a good idea of what it is you might be able to structure for them because it sounds like you're able to customize that a little bit yeah and that's exactly what we do and that's why that first step is that discovery and diagnostic consultation because in doing that sometimes we'll find that they are already doing something and they're doing a great job and there's no so we don't even touch it we move right past them say hey you, and i've actually even just recently we had a a client that i won't say specifically what it was i don't want to give their personal info but they had somebody doing something for them and they were doing a great job already and they charged the same amount that we charge for it and I said fine they're already doing a good job you like them service is good keep using them for that we'll do a B and C let them do D and so we will do that and we'll have in addition this it'll be a consultation it's not a sales call it is a true paid consultation now typically the end of it a dealer will often say hey how much would it be for you to do this for us but it's not required it's a consultation in which I'm helping them so they can see succeed even more than they already are whether they use us for those services or not and so they have found that to be really really valuable and you know I didn't like I said I didn't do that in the beginning we added that later and it turned out to be the best decision I could make for my business but also for the dealer because they love that they absolutely love that I get in there and say here's the things you're doing right here's the things you could tweak a little and it doesn't necessarily require us but you do need to have this done and so we become a great resource for them in that aspect and helping them succeed regardless of who's doing it for them. Well, I can tell you, I'm, I'm going to hire you, Kenny. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, too. I probably <laughs> want to talk to you after this. I'm looking at everything that you're doing, which is a good thing. I think that you know what, what's cool about what you have here is that you specialize in marketing and not necessarily in all these broken pieces. A lot of times I'll see marketing companies and they focus primarily on SEO or they're just a pay-per-click company. They don't have that well-rounded, like focused consulting perspective as a marketing professional a lot of times. They end up kind of taking companies down these narrow roads where it really seems like you're able to come in and analyze where the dealer is and you've got enough of a service level with a number of things that you offer that something's going to work for them and going to get tailored from your services. So I think that's great. Yeah, thank you. And you know, there are things that we don't do, but that I'm still very well versed in and that I could direct the dealer to either do or not do or what to watch for if they decide to do it. And we may even be able to provide them with a couple of resources to get it done. The only reason we don't do it is because maybe it's outside of our strength or comfort zone. I know how to do it. We could do it. I just choose not to because we want to stick with our strengths, but I still understand it and know it. And so that's why that consultation, again, becomes valuable because they may ask me about something. I'll say, you know, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I have some clients that are doing that. And they'll say, great, do you do that? And I'll say, no, but here's a couple of resources that someone that does. And actually, when you mentioned marketing, that's not actually our platform. It's not our software, but I knew that it was valuable and important. So I went through about a dozen resources that offered it and found the one that I liked the best based on what I know a dealer needs. And so we put that on there so that when a, a dealer comes there and says, oh, they've got texting marketing, what they would find out is we'll set it up for them and run it for them or even coach them on how to use it properly and just give them the resource if they decide they just want to do it on their own. So that's one of those things where you know, we don't actually build the platform. I just know how to use it. I know that it does everything I want it to do, which is good for the dealer. Resources are something that can be very confusing. And time's taking, too. Dealer can get hooked into a resource, not know the research, not know what could be working better for him, be stuck with it because that's what he thinks works. So that's very valuable. 
One thing that intrigued me in our conversation earlier, Kenny, is we were getting around to talking about what the missed opportunity for dealers it really is, what they're really losing out on. And I'd like to start now and just go ahead and give you the floor here and let you talk about that. Sure. I guess you could say opportunity versus opportunities, plural, because I don't necessarily mean one particular media, right? So a dealer might hear this and say, oh, he's about to give us that secret weapon. You know what? Everybody knows almost uh, all the different strategies and platforms out there. They just don't know how to use them and which ones they should be using. So I'm not going to spit out one particular media or distribution channel. Actually, here, let me tell you a good story. So this little boy, Billy, wanting to go to the baseball game at night with his dad, and his dad says, you take him fishing. His dad wants to get him to the great outdoors, wants to go fishing, and he says, tell you what, Billy, let's go fishing. If you catch more fish than me by noon, I'll take you to the baseball game. He says, mm, okay. And little Billy's a smart kid, as you'll see in a minute. They go to the fishing hole, and dad walks down and throws his line in the water, and he's ready to go, and he's thinking, oh, man, we're not going to the baseball game tonight. Billy's still up in the truck. Well, little did he know, Billy was up in the truck collecting his fishing pole, his two brothers' fishing pole, his sister and his mother's fishing pole. He goes down to the fishing hole, throws a line into the water, walks 10 feet, throws a line in the water, walks 10 feet, until he's got all these lines in the water from all these different fishing poles. Well, it turns out Billy catches more fish than his dad by noon and gets to go to the baseball game. And the reason is, you know, he wasn't any really better of a fisherman. He just put more lines in the water. And so the missed opportunity, going back to dealers here, is they don't have enough lines in the water. Too many dealers are doing maybe one or two things, and they are not doing the other six or seven things that would be truly powerful for them. So I'll have a dealer that will call me and say, hey, we heard you were pretty sharp. Someone in our 20 group said, you got to talk to Kenny, and we want to pay for a consultation. And so we have a consultation. And I say, well, the first thing is I want to see all your marketing and advertising and media currently and see if we can tweak that, if there's any improvements to be made to that before adding anything. And sometimes it's a very quick, short conversation because the only thing they're doing is television and radio. And they have a website. I say, well, are you doing local SEO? Are you doing Google pay-per-click, Facebook pay-per-click, remarketing, email newsletters, print newsletters, direct mail, every door direct mail? And their answer is no, they aren't doing any of those things. And so the big missed opportunity is not having enough lines in the water. Now, the reason why, uh, I believe, is because they don't know how to use it. They don't know what works, which is why I provide that consultation, but also they don't have someone to do it. And so that's why it's nice to have a company that can do several of those things because rarely, you know, most dealers, whoever's making their website for them, just cannot help them with every door direct mail. Uh, they don't have the skill set for it, and they shouldn't do it, or they can't help them with online reviews. You know, and so they have to get it in five, six, seven different places, or they don't have somebody to run it, even if they're buying it in five, six, seven different places, which takes me back to that marketing director SR program I talked about. Uh, so they don't, they don't have the bodies to do it. Now, in the buyer payer space, that's typically what it is. They may know about it. They heard me speak at an event and said, can you give us seven, eight different things we could do? And then two months later, they're not doing but one of them. And it's because they've got people working there that are wearing so many hats, they just can't get to it. And so they need assistance with it. So coming all the way back full circle, the missed opportunity is not exploring enough opportunities. I'll make a, a comparison to baseball, Beto, and that is it's not about the home run. The Cardinals, actually, my favorite team. Last year, they hit more home runs they, than they had ever hit in a year. And I think they led the National League in home runs and didn't even make the playoffs. It's because it's not all about the home run. And in marketing and advertising nowadays, even more so, it is not about the home run. It's better to have five, six, seven singles than one home run. And too many dealers are looking for that one thing that they could do to dominate. And honestly, you just can't. You've got to be doing five or six different things. You need to hit those singles versus trying to, in other words, you need to sell five cars using this media, sell 10 cars using this one, 20 using this one, versus trying to find one where you could sell 40 cars. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It really does. Here's a big question, okay? I'm a dealer. I'm looking to possibly expand my marketing strategy. What you're saying is making sense to me. I got to get more lines in the water per se. So what is the very first thing for dealers to consider when moving forward with the new marketing strategy? Well, that could actually be to frame two different ways. One could be whether they're considering the strategy and whether to use it or not, or they are already deciding that you're going to use that strategy, and then what's the first thing to consider? Let's start with the first one, whether they're even going to use a strategy they're considering now. So what's the first thing to consider if looking at a new strategy? And that is, 
who's the one that told you about it and how much credibility do they have or, or what their motivation is. So you might have heard about something in a 20 group and someone says, yeah, I heard about this and I think it's awesome. And they aren't actually doing it yet and they have no proof of whether it works. Or they're doing it and it doesn't necessarily mean it worked for you if you're in a small town in Louisiana and they're in New York. The strategy they're using may not work for you. Or is it a salesperson for a company that sells one or two things, and so they're telling you about how great their thing is, and they don't take a consultative approach uh, like we do that we've already talked about. They're just selling. And selling is fine. We're all salespeople. But if they don't take a consultative approach first, you've got to consider their motivation. So that's the first thing to consider when deciding whether or not to even consider using a strategy. Now, once you've made that decision, you say, okay, we're going to do this. Then the first thing to consider about a particular media or strategy is the target, who it is that you're targeting with the advertisement and market. You need in marketing, you need to decide and know what your marketing is and whether or not that platform is going to reach your market, and then the message to that market as well. As an example, if you owned a steakhouse, you're not going to spend money trying to sell steak to vegetarians. Now, someone might say, well, hey, I get vegetarians that come in and, and they spend money. Yeah, that's great. If they come in, that's fine. Same thing with SEO, right? So if, a, if you're a buy here, pay here dealer and someone that's looking for a brand new Ford F-150 happens to come on your lot, terrific. If they end up buying a truck that they're willing to buy from you, that's great. But you're not going to go out and you're not going to bid on the keyword uh, Ford uh, 2017 Ford F-150 if you're a buy here, pay here dealer because you're paying money and it's usually going to be a waste. So back to the restaurant. Don't spend a bunch of money trying to sell steaks to a vegetarian. That's just the first step of that. In addition, you might have a, a few salads on the menu and some slimy tofu dish, but that's not likely to make the vegetarian happy. So even if they do come in one time and give you their money, they're not likely to come back. They're not going to buy again. They're not going to refer because they probably hang out with a few other vegetarians. And so you spend all this money trying to get a customer that's not the ideal customer. The first step in new media is determining your target and what the media is. Does it reach that target or the message for that? Now, another example, uh, offline, if you're using direct mail, and every door direct mail is one for dealers to consider. If you are a buy here, pay here dealer, for example, you wouldn't send postcards via every door direct mail to a neighborhood that contains 4,000 square foot homes. You know, probably not. It'd probably be a waste of your money. So you'd want to consider the target, not just the postcard and the message. Whereas if you were a franchise dealer, you probably won't uh, send Everdoor direct mail postcards to the same neighborhood that a buy here, pay here dealer might try to reach. And yes, I know there's some buy here, pay here customers in a neighborhood where there's mostly franchise dealer purchasers and vice versa. Limit the amount of advertising waste. So you've really got to consider that target. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, Kenny, what do you see as the difference between marketing as a franchise dealer, independent retail, and buy here, pay here? There's got to be quite a bit that you've learned over time dealing with so many different styles of dealerships with the client base that you've built. Tell me about it. What's the differences between these? There's absolutely a difference. It's a big difference, and not everybody knows about it. And I'm glad we got to this subject because I see it a lot. This is someone not knowing this. This is one of the top areas in which dealers waste money on advertising and marketing because they're working with someone or they're buying a service and the person providing the service or the company providing the service doesn't understand the difference between a franchise dealer and independent retailer and buy here, pay here. Since we talked about Google Pay Per Click earlier, let's talk about that again. We certainly do a lot more than that, but it's a good example that I've seen a lot is that you'll have an agency or someone that does Google Pay Per Click will be managing ads for a buy here, pay here dealer, not understanding the business model, and they will be advertising the buy here, pay here dealership in the same way that they would advertise a franchise dealership. And that doesn't work, and it wastes a lot of money because we go back to the target again. Their targeting is off. Uh, their messaging is off too, and I'll get to that, but their targeting is off. Uh, as an example, a buy here, pay here dealer probably shouldn't be bidding on the term. So if someone goes to Google and types in car dealership, a buyer payer dealer probably doesn't bid on that term because a high percentage of people that are typing that in are looking for a franchise dealer. And if not that, they're looking for a used car dealership, probably independent, or used cars at a franchise dealership where the mileage is under 
40,000, under 30,000, or under 20,000, and a buy here, pay your dealer doesn't usually provide that, the targeting is off. And the same thing can happen the other way, right? If you're a franchise dealer, if someone types in bad credit car dealership, you don't necessarily want your Ford dealership showing up just because the word dealership was in the keyword phrase. You don't necessarily want to bid on that because the chances of them even being able to buy from you is close to zero, unless that franchise dealership has a buyer payer dealership or does a little bit of buyer payer on the side, you know, then maybe they do. And then taking that example to a different type of media, let's say direct mail. For example, again, I mentioned the Everdoor direct mail earlier, is choosing the neighborhood based on the type of dealer you are. That's what should be done. I already spoke about that, but the point is that target. And if you were going to do direct mail, a good way to determine what neighborhoods you might mail to is just put all your existing customers on a spreadsheet. You probably can export it from your DMS easily and then put them in order of zip code just by, there's a way to do it to sort that data and then look at the zip codes and pick out the zip codes where you already have a lot of customers. And then chances are there's a reason for that. You don't even have to know the reason. Just know that there's a lot of people in certain zip codes that are buying from you. That means that neighborhood is probably a fit for you. So that's probably a quick and easy way to determine that target. And then the messaging for the target as well is very, very important depending on the type of dealership you are. And I like to, I haven't mentioned independent retail a lot here because there's such a big difference between buy here, pay here and franchise. And then independent's really kind of in the middle. But if you're a buy here, pay here dealer, a lot of your messaging is going to say things like, don't feel, it's, it's essentially going to make people not feel bad about their bad credit situation. So you'll see buy here, pay here dealers on their website, they'll say things like, we finance your future, not your past. You know, we are the bank. We decide whether you get buy a vehicle, and it's not just based on your credit score. Franchise dealer, they talk more about the vehicle, less about the financing, or they should, I should say. And that's why it's important to work with someone that knows the difference between those the three types of dealerships. You know, an independent dealer is in the middle. You know, they can actually pull some customers from the buyer payer space and the franchise space, you know, but they are in the middle there of everything I just said to keep it short. But the same thing, their language is the same. Someone types in used car dealer, then you might want your advertisement for an independent retail dealer. You want your ad to show up. But if they type in a very specific vehicle, you're going to want to test it. You don't want to put those ads up at first because if they type in a very specific vehicle, chances are they may be looking for a franchise dealer. You know, and you also want to make sure you have those. I've seen dealerships, believe it or not, that had somebody else who was managing their Google ads, and they would be advertising for the keyword term Ford F-150, and they didn't even have any on the lot at the time. Now, they've had them on the lot previously. They just don't have any right now. So if someone types in the exact vehicle they want and click on your ad and go to your website and you don't have that type of vehicle, they're annoyed, and they're going to leave, and they're not going to buy from you. You just wasted a click to your website, which might have cost you $3 or $8, depending on the term. That makes tons of sense. You know what, Kenny? I think that uh, there is such a difference in having someone like you come into the dealership and look at it. Even if you are independent, franchise, buy here, pay here, whatever it might be, you would probably agree with me that even just the dealership itself has individualized needs that may Absolutely. be specific to his backyard, specific to things that he's tried or hasn't tried. And and so that, that brings me that marketing is such a wide gamut for these dealers. It's changing constantly, especially since the advent of the Internet. Things have changed drastically and very rapidly. So what do you think is the future of marketing? When I talk about the future of marketing, every year at the beginning of the year or at the end of a year, I talk about what's coming in the next year, and I make some predictions, and people always like that. Um, but when I talk about it in a broader sense, I like to talk more about the direction versus a specific media. And the direction, now someone would say, oh, the direction is digital. Yes, that's true, and that's continuing to grow. However, offline platforms like direct mail still work wonderfully when done right. So that's not what I mean. Uh, when I mean direction, I mean the market is going to continue to get more and more saturated. And so what happens is more and more customers are exposed to more and more advertisements. Depending on where you read it, you know, I've read that the average person is exposed to 5,000 advertisements per day in, of some sort. And that seems like a lot, but if you start looking around after I say that, I mean, everywhere you look, I mean, I go to the gym and I'm 
standing at the urinal and there's advertisements in front of my face above the urinal. You can't go anywhere without seeing advertisements, right? The average consumer is exposed to more and more advertising and it's continuing to happen. Facebook is opening up new avenues to advertise on Facebook that people don't even know about right now. And each one of the different types of media platforms is offering different types of advertisements. So, and new platforms will be popping up as well. So the future of marketing is something that actually is important now too, and that is you absolutely have to make sure that you stand out as unique from the competition. Now sometimes this is challenging to figure out, and so I'll work with a dealer and I'll ask them their story, how did you get started, why did you start the business, and I'm going to have to pull it out of them. And so part of it could just be their story, their message, uh, but it's also what your customers have to say about you. That's what can make you unique. And even if you do the exact same thing as uh, another dealership, or nearly exact, just by stating that you do something, that can have an effect. As an example, I love this. I'll make it a, a short story if you'll allow me, Beto. But Claude Hopkins, the one of the, the greatest advertisers ever, he wrote uh, scientific advertising. He was doing some consulting for Schlitz Beer a long time ago. I don't even know if that beer exists anymore. And they brought him in for a consulting day. And this is one of the reasons I actually like to go to a dealership, uh, why it's powerful, because we'll figure things out while we're there that we may not otherwise just by phone or uh, you know webinar tool. And he went there and saw the manufacturing process, and he saw them steam cleaning the bottles. And he said to the, the guy, he said, hey, what are you guys doing there? And they said, oh, we steam clean all the bottles before we you know, put the beer in. He said, really? He goes, I've got my hook. And so when he met with the powers that be at Schlitz, he said, oh, we've got the hook for the advertisement. We want to tell people we steam clean all our bottles before bottling the freshest beer in America. And the, the um, powers at Schlitz said, oh, well, that doesn't matter. All beer makers do that. And he goes, you know what? I didn't know that, and I drink beer. And none of your customers know that. So simply by stating that, you will stand out. And then when other you know, producers of beer follow suit in saying that if they're smart enough to figure that out. Instead of thinking you're dumb for even saying it since everybody does it, if they start to copy you, people will still associate you with having been the first one to do that. So even sometimes stating things that you do, like a buyer pay your dealer, they do uh, recon, they reconditioning on all their vehicles. They simply can state they do that. And even if the other competitors in town do it, they may not actually explain it. So that, there's an example of that. Getting your customers to talk about you becomes more and more important as we have more avenues for people to reach potential customers. So your online reviews have got to be stellar. Uh, you need to be earning more and more referrals. Uh, as we get more and more platforms for people to reach your customer, you need to get more referrals. Uh, in addition to online reviews and your customers talking about you. And lastly, because I want to throw one media in there, one media type is online video. You've got to be promoting those videos because they're powerful. It's for the same reason that television worked so, so well when it first came out. Everybody's excited. Oh, I want to get a television commercial because people were used to listening to the radio. And once you could actually see the human being on the screen, the advertisement was powerful. Well, online video is powerful for the same reason. Now, I've been promoting that as the future for many years, but the technology finally caught up and now more and more people are doing that. So uh, the future is in standing out to sum it up short. I see that, and I absolutely agree with that. And it's been that way forever. You, you always got to have something that stands out, but now you're so right. There's so much noise. There's just so much noise out there that people have learned to tune things out. You've got to have something that hooks them, that catches them, that's, that's beyond anything else that they're used to seeing because the things they're used to seeing are just becoming background noise. It's like a someone who lived in the country who moved to a city when he first gets there, like everything sounds so loud, but everyone who lives in the city, they can't even hear it. <laughs> they've learned yeah. to they've learned to tune all that stuff out and it really has become a climate to where people are marketed to so much, they've been tuning that stuff out and you really do have to take some kind of a unique edge to make that work. And fully agree with the video thing as well. I think that's a good advice. You know, Kenny, thank you for joining us here and giving us your story, talking to us about the business and the services that you have. If someone wanted to get a hold of you, what is the most direct and easiest ways to do that? Uh, best way to do it, you know, because I take personal calls for me if they want to speak to me by appointment. So go to www.dealerprofit.com. 
profitpros.com. That's Profit Pros with an S. So dealerprofitpros.com. Click on the Contact Us page and just fill out the form there, and my assistant will set up a time to make sure we don't play phone tag. And that's really the best way to be productive. So if anyone just picks up the phone and calls, they probably won't get me, and then they'll just have to make the appointment anyway. So best to go to the website. Look around while you're there. You'll get some value out of that. I do the same thing on the website as I do in an interview like this. I want to give some good ideas whether someone works with us or not. Uh, I find that to be uh, valuable for the dealer, but it also works for us long term too. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And so for those of you that have been listening to this broadcast, know that there is a way to get a hold of Kenny. You can get to his company quickly by going to dealerprofitpros.com finding the contact information, giving them a call, sending them an email, getting in touch with them, and it's a great idea to do that. Kenny, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. I love what you guys are doing, Beto. Awesome. Have a good night. You too.